And then this week, the new census numbers came out. Here's what those numbers show. The number, not the proportion, but the absolute number of Americans who describe themselves as white has dropped for the first time in our history since the census began back in 1890. The total decline is around 5 million people. Now, that is huge. Experts who study demographics for a living were shocked by it. They'd never seen anything like this. Why did this happen? Where did all these people go and why? They're Americans, remember. Well, as leading Democrats put it again and again, who cares? Fewer white people in America is a great thing, and we should celebrate. Right now, Stephen Miller and Donald Trump are at Mar-a-Lago, and they're throwing up because this is not the America they want to see. I was at the White House the other day, and guess who's got Stephen Miller's <laughs> old office? Her name is Susan Rice, and she's Sue one of Pete. us. And guess who is in Ivanka Trump's old office? Julie Rodriguez. Who? She is Cesar Chavez's oh, I love Julie. granddaughter. Did you hear that? Her name is Susan Rice. She's one of us. Meaning she's a Democrat? No. It means she's not white. Us is the non-white people cheering the extinction of white people. That was on television. Think about that for a minute. It's hard to think about it, actually, because it's that evil. And if you wanted to encourage permanent racial division, maybe even violence in America, that is exactly how you would talk on television. These people are completely out of control. They are dangerous. And it's not just CNN analysts who are talking this way. By the way, once again, there is no more divisive thing that you could say on television. There is no way you could more quickly and more permanently wreck the country than to encourage people to gloat over the decline of a race. Seriously? Imagine any other race. People talking like that. It's, it's nuts, actually. But again, members of Congress are talking that way, or even fake ones. Here's Eleanor Holmes Norton, who pretends to serve in Congress. Look at where the population is, and that's how we win or have to try to win in the census numbers. Because the population growth has been in the cities and, and in the suburbs, among minorities. Uh, and that's what gives us some leverage. Got that? Democrats win when we have fewer white people in the country. And that's why they're celebrating the new census numbers. She just said that out loud. You should never say anything like that out loud. But they are. At the Washington Post, columnist Jennifer Rubin joined the cheering. Fewer white people, she wrote, you can look it up, is, quote, fabulous news. Now we need to prevent minority white rule. Minority white rule? Do you recognize that phrase? Oh, South Africa. That's what she wants, South Africa. She said it. We didn't. We would never say something like that. But wait a second, you ask. What about the numbers? What happened to all those white people who are now missing from the census? Well, it turns out many of them perished in the opioid epidemic. Hundreds of thousands of young Americans, mostly from rural communities, dead from drug overdoses. A columnist from the Washington Post is cheering that. Their deaths are fabulous, she says. It's hard even to know how to respond to that. So we're going to pull back and let Pedro Gonzalez assess it. He's the associate editor at Chronicles Magazine. We're happy to have him join us now. Pedro, thanks so much for coming on. Boy, if you wanted to wreck the United States and cause actual conflict, you would talk like Jen Rubin. What, why are they talking this way? Because this is about power and control. And the, the funny thing about the Rubin narrative is basically uh, white people are being marginalized, but you're not allowed to notice. You're not even allowed to talk about it. And if you disagree with them being marginalized, you're racist. It's racist, of course, because supposedly white people are the villains of human history. That is an absurd calumny. The truth is that the specter of white supremacy is used to fuel the growth of a corrupt political order, and whites are, in fact, the victims in this system. If you look at things like wages and life expectancy, those have fallen for the white working class while they've risen for all other groups. If you look at our culture of affirmative action, we disadvantage white people in this country in jobs and schooling, and we do it by lowering expectations and standards for everyone else. Deaths related to suicide, and as you noted, drug overdoses, and alcohol-related illnesses, these things have soared for middle-aged white men and women in the last 20 years. And people like Jennifer Rubin can do little than say, you deserve it, I'm going to spit on your grave, and you're not allowed to notice or do anything about it. All of this is the result of deliberate policy choices, not from the Democratic Party. It, it's also a Republican Party problem. The Uniparty is a real thing. The ruling class in this country has deconstructed trust to govern. It invited millions of people into this country. 
and told them that any disparity in outcome, you just point to a white person and say, it's your fault. It, it's psychotic, but historically, this is what imperial and colonial governments do. They encourage division between groups. In other words, making people hate each other is the point. The, the neoliberal politics of racial grievances, of demographic deconstruction, are about poisoning the moral character of Americans and making them so hateful toward each other that they don't notice people like Rubin and they don't notice people like the Uniparty are actively trying to destroy their lives. I think we need to stop talking about race entirely in this country and just talk about Americans. I mean, ten, hundreds of thousands of Americans, leaving aside their color, have died of opioid ODs, and the only one anyone in Washington notices is George Floyd. So how do you think Americans feel about that? If your nephew or your son just died at 22 of an opioid OD, OD and Jennifer Rubin says that's great news, like, you're going to get something horrible if you keep acting that way, aren't that's you? Right. Yeah. No, it's fundamentally dehumanizing. You're completely stripping people of the thing that makes them human and basically just reducing them to points on a board. Fewer white people in this country, like you said, is a good thing. And again, if you're a white person and you hear this, what is your reaction going to be? And you're basically stoking, I mean, there's no, there's no way to put this nicely, right? You're ginning up racial hatred between right. different groups in this country that might otherwise get along, and you're doing it for either cynical or ideological reasons. I'm not sure which is worse, whether you really believe in this stuff or it's just a means to an end. In either case, it is anti-civilizational. If, if you want to destroy a society, this is how you do it. Exactly. And they're going to make people super radical, and it's going to be Jen Rubin's fault. There's no doubt about that. Pedro Gonzalez, I appreciate it. Thank you so much.